Usually the good lord works in mysterious ways, but not today. This here is 66 tons of straight up H E spewing divine intervention. An essential part of any science fiction faction is their military, and the essential part of that is their ground forces. From the iconic White Legions of the Clone Army to the ranks of the UNSC Marines, sci-fi has a lot of awesome armies to take inspiration from. And what army is complete without a tank? In these videos, we'll be covering the basics of designing a tank for your own sci-fi universe, looking at our modern day MBTs as well as technologies that could be used in the future. Today we'll be focusing on a tank's weaponry, looking at what kinds of weapons are available and what systems are needed to use them. The tank originated during the brutal trench warfare of the First World War as one of many strategies to try and break the stalemate. Since then, they've seen a lot of evolution into a variety of forms, such as the British cruiser tanks, the German and Soviet heavies, or the medium and light tanks used by a variety of nations. However, we will be focusing on the most modern interpretation of tank doctrine, the main battle tank. These general purpose vehicles are the preeminent type of tank on the battlefield, and they are probably what fictional militaries in the future will be using as well. One of the most important aspects of the main battle tank is how it balances the golden triangle of tank design. Armament, protection, and mobility. Though some tanks lean more heavily in one direction or another, most MBTs try to strike a balance so it can be useful in all of the roles it has to fill. Among the most important aspects of a tank is its armament. Given the MBT's main goal is to provide direct fire, especially in support of infantry, your sci-fi tank must have a weapon capable of doing that. For this, we have a lot of options to choose from, with various benefits and trade-off. First, we could go with the tried and tested option of a standard tank cannon. It is simple, proven effective in the real world, and easily recognizable by general audiences. In a near future setting, this is the most realistic choice, but we can even see them in the far future settings like Halo or Warhammer 40k. However, conventional guns are basically at the limits of advancement. Aside from changes in size and ammunition, they aren't going to get much better. That isn't to discount them, however. Between ammunition like armor-piercing fin stabilized discarding sabo rounds, or high explosive anti-tank rounds, these tanks can hit targets up to 3 kilometers away and penetrate about 700 millimeters of armor. These are perfectly valid weapon systems even in the far future, although at that point they might see competition from other types of weapons. If the goal is to find a more advanced weapon than today, in the near future one of the most likely replacements is the electrothermal chemical gun, or ETC gun. This evolution of the tank cannon is fairly simple. Instead of a chemical pin, the propellant is ignited by a plasma igniter. This change sounds small, but it can make a round's performance much more consistent and allows the use of propellants with higher muzzle velocity that also have a lower cook-off rates in case of being hit. This would both make it more effective and safer to use in a future tank. Most attractively, it can also use old ammunition designed for conventional cannons, so at first you would not even need to design new ammunition for it. ETC guns have already been used in the real world on technology demonstrators like the XM291 and XM360, and it is likely that in the next 20 to 30 years they might get put into service. For a newer future or otherwise hard sci-fi setting, this is probably the most realistic option for a tank. Another possible armament for a sci-fi tank is the railgun. A staple of science fiction settings, these are an attractive option for weaponry for a number of reasons. Firstly, since the rounds are launched by energy, the ammunition itself would be inert, eliminating the risk of burning when hit. A tank would also be able to store more of it, since the ammo would be smaller. There is also a significant increase in muzzle velocity and therefore penetration. 
However, there are some technological hurdles a sci-fi military faces to make a railgun useful on a tank. In the present day, both the railguns and the power to operate them are quite large. This isn't a problem for the Navy or any fictional space military that wants to use them, but it is an issue for mounting it on an armored vehicle. Railguns will have to see significant miniaturization before they are small enough to be useful. There are also some issues with maintenance and reliability. Due to the magnetic forces inside the railgun, it would wear out quickly, and repairing it or replacing it would not be easy to do. Another possible technology that could be mounted on a tank is a laser system. Like the railgun, laser weapons are a staple of science fiction militaries. While lasers are quite useful for a space navy, I don't think they'd be very useful on a tank. For one, while a laser hits its target at the speed of light, it actually would have less range than a conventional tank cannon, at least in atmosphere, due to thermal blooming and atmospheric disturbances. A laser would also have a hard time cutting through tank armor, and that is without accounting for the wide variety of countermeasures that one could deploy to counter one. In short, lasers make for terrible tank weapons, but they might see use as a form of active protection system designed to destroy or divert incoming missiles. Lasers are also used in the real world as a dazzler systems on tanks. Plasma, on the other hand, could be extremely useful as a tank weapon. I think an effective plasma weapon could probably act a lot like a kinetic round, and a good one could even melt through a tank's armor. Even if it couldn't, the heat effects could cause serious problems for the crew and equipment inside. I think even a single hit could be enough to overheat a tank's engine, melt the tracks, or render the cannon inoperable any of which is a practically a mission kill. However, plasma weaponry is definitely a far future technology. Current equipment has barely managed an effective range of a few feet, which is a bit low for a tank gun, and it would require the tank to make a lot of space for weapon fuel. Artistically, I'd also reserve plasma to more advanced civilizations and contrast them against the kinetic weapons of less advanced civilizations. However, that's just my personal preference. In addition to these, you could also go with more unique things like particle lances, CLG guns, or ATGM launchers. Most tanks also possess secondary weapons, and one of the most common of these is the machine gun. In the modern day, there are two common places to mount a machine gun. A gun coaxial to the main gun, and a gun on the turret in front of the commander's cupola. Some tanks also have additional guns for tag-along infantry to use. These guns are mostly used against enemy infantry, but they can sometimes be used against light vehicles or even helicopters if they get close enough. However, for the most part, the main gun would be used on those. Some tanks are also equipped with ATGM launchers or small mortars as secondary armament, which could be useful in certain situations. In the past, Tanks have even been equipped with rocket artillery. Though the actual effectiveness of this can be dubious, I think it looks really cool. However, designing a tank is not as simple as selecting an armament. A tank designer also has to consider a number of auxiliary factors. For example, is your tank turreted like a traditional tank, such as the T-34 Abrams, or is it a casemate like the Jag Panther or M3 Lee? A turret is obviously more useful in most combat situations, but casemates are significantly cheaper to build and maintain, especially if a faction's goal is to stick a gun on a chasis as fast as possible. Another thing to consider is whether or not the gun should use an autoloader. This debate is basically as old as the autoloader itself, so there's no way I can give a definitive answer one way or the other. Each has its pros and its cons. A human loader, for example, can be useful from a logical perspective. Not only do they not need maintenance or spare parts, they can also help with keeping the tank in fighting condition, and on the battlefield they can help with division of labor and observation. However, an autoloader can lift heavier ordnance over a long period of time compared to a human counterpart. 
and they are a useful resource for a nation short on manpower. An autoloader also allows the use of an unmanned turret, which has its own set of considerations to think about. Finally, the effectiveness of a tank's weapon depends heavily on its fire control systems. Early tanks, for example, had nothing but basic optics and simple vertical stabilizers, if they were lucky, to engage enemy targets. Hitting anything beyond a couple kilometers was a challenge, and firing on the move required a lot of skill and luck. Modern tanks, on the other hand, have access to advanced laser rangefinders, IR cameras, and dual-axis stabilizers. Some are even equipped with advanced ballistic computers that can automatically track a target. Whatever technology level your sci-fi faction is at, the fire control systems on your tank will have a major impact on how it is used in combat. A tank with poor systems will have to stop every time it is fired, forcing them to be very careful about how they move, and combat will heavily favor stationary tactics. On the other hand, a more advanced tank is able to easily shoot and scoot, or even fire on the move, leaving room for faster pace engagements with a lot more maneuvering. As this video should probably help you see, there are a lot of options to choose from and factors to consider when designing a tank's weapons. Let's quickly recap some of these choices. First, in a sci-fi setting, we have a lot of future weapons to choose from. There are more advanced technologies like plasma weapons or railguns, which have a lot of firepower but are beyond current energy generation capabilities. But one could also go with simpler weapons like ETC guns or conventional cannons. A tank will usually also have a secondary armament like a machine gun or a mortar. Second, a designer has a number of factors to consider while designing a gun. Is the tank turreted or casemate? How effective is its turret traverse? Does it use an autoloader or human crewman? The answers to these questions will affect how a tank is used. Finally, what kind of fire control systems a tank has will affect its performance significantly. It doesn't matter how good a tank's weapon is if it can't effectively hit its targets. While there are many other factors to armament design than I can cover in this video, I think this should be enough for a good head start when it comes to researching more about the topic. In the next episode, I'll be continuing this topic by covering tank armor and countermeasures. In the meantime, however, I will see you all Starside. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Starside. If you have another topic you want me to cover, make sure to comment down below and it may just become my next video. If you're interested in more, make sure to hit like and subscribe. Anyway, have a great rest of your day.